Hey there everybody, I'm Forrest, the Renegade Science Teacher, and welcome to the third episode of Scientest, the show where an actual scientist unboxes, tests, and savagely reviews science kits intended for small children. I swear, that's never gonna not make me laugh. The day that I'm used to saying that is the day that we'll stop making these. And on today's episode, we'll be testing out the Gross Gummy Candy Lab STEM Experiment Kit from Thames and Cosmos. I really wanted to do some big National Geographic science kit for this episode, but when I saw this at the store, and it was in amongst the science kits, and it even says STEM Experiment Kit at the top, I knew that this had to be our next feature. Hey, gummy scientists! Gross new shapes, delicious new flavors! Mold your own delicious gummy worms and spiders using a natural gelatin-like ingredient called Karajanan. 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 That comes from seaweed! <laughs> Flavor and sweeten your mixture with mixed berry and green apple flavors. Then mold the gummy worms and spiders in the included mold. Learn about the scientific properties of natural polymers. Food ingredients included. Right off the top, it sounds like we're not actually going to be doing any experiments. We're just going to be doing the things that the instruction booklet says to do. Now, this box is shrink-wrapped, so I haven't been able to get inside here and see what this instruction booklet actually says. But, handily, they have written on the back of the box here that to make the gummies, you will also need water, measuring spoons, a microwave-safe container or cooking pot, a spoon, and some toothpicks. So now that we have everything that we need for a successful gummy endeavor, let's get started. I'm gonna get all this stuff moved over to the side so it doesn't get in our way. I'm very particular about how I set up things like this whenever I'm gonna be doing a presentation. The spoons have to be lined up. These can go right there. This should kind of cover that directly and this handle needs to be pointed at me. Stay. I am genuinely stoked to get this thing open. Snoosh! Bloop. All right, we've got some sort of gummy molds. Those look really cool. We've got some booklets and some baggies. Nice. A mysterious bag full of various white powders. That's what you give to kids. And that looks like about it. <gasps> stickers! We will not be using those. To be fair, those look like stickers for labeling, not stickers for like artistic expression, but either way. Ugh. It looks like on our mysterious powders bag, we have a wide variety of things. We have powdered seaweed, that's good. We have mixed berry sugar, delicious. Green apple sugar, that sounds great. And sour mix. So that's two flavoring, some sort of polymer, and probably citric acid. I can rock with it. Let's take a look at our first instruction. With this kit, you can make one batch of green apple flavored gummies and one batch of mixed berry flavored gummies. Follow these instructions to make one batch of gummies in one flavor, then repeat the process with the other flavor. Got it. Note, these gummies will not turn out exactly the same as commercial store-bought gummies made of gelatin. That's good. Just set our expectations nice and low right at the beginning. That way it can only go up from here. You will need one half of the seaweed powder packet. One half. So they really do mean you'll make one batch of jellies and then one other batch of jellies, and then you're done. One flavor sugar packet. The whole thing. So yeah, you just use half of this and one of those. You also need scissors, measuring spoons, water, cooking pot, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we got that. Mix half of the packet of seaweed powder with one half cup of water in a cooking pot or microwave safe container. Stir the mixture well. Here's our powdered seaweed. I just sliced the edge off. It says in the kit that one half of this is about three tablespoons and two teaspoons. I'm not gonna measure that out, man. Kids wouldn't measure that out. I'm just gonna make sure that it's about half like that. That's, that's about, that's about half. Is that about half? That's about half. That's about half. And then one half of a cup of water. How much do I have here? I've got uh, quite a bit more than that. Uh, a little bit more. I uh, think that's good. Heat the mixture in the microwave until it foams up. Because microwave powers vary greatly, we suggest setting the microwave for 30 seconds and watching closely. Stop the microwave immediately when you see the mixture foaming up. That is written in bold. Okay, I'll just put down a paper towel here and I will go microwave this mixture. I'll be right back. All right, 
Point of interest, my microwave is 1100 watts and that took about 50 seconds in case you wanna try this at home. Choose the green apple or mixed berry sugar flavor mixture packet and stir it into the mixture. Okay, we're gonna do green apple, I like green. In goes this whole freaking packet. That's a lot of sugar. That is a smell. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's, that's hot soup. Oh, and that smell keeps getting weirder. Like the smell, it's, it's, it's better than you think it'd smell, but it's worse than you hope it smells. It's like a, it's like a fruity carcass. I don't want to eat this. Do I have to eat this? Cause like when it said that it's the gross candy lab, I thought it meant that it was like gross science and then you make candy, not like it was gross candy. Whatever, I haven't even tasted it. Maybe it's great, maybe it's great. I bet, I bet it's gonna be great. Pour the mixture into the individual molds in the plastic tray with the spoon. If the mixture becomes too solid to pour, heat it up again, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Here's a spider. This is some precision stuff. Like these molds, they're not tiny, but they have some little parts to them, man. You know, these spiders have all sorts of legs that you gotta fill in all carefully. I don't wanna just pour this stuff all over the place. I'm going to the worms. I think I need to invest in a second camera. Like if I could get some sort of like a cool overhead dangle angle, you know? How do they do it on like Good Mythical Morning? This is just work. This is just, this is work. There's way more goo than like mold space. Like there's no way I'm not just gonna have a giant bowl full of gummy candy here. How am I supposed to do these little spider legs? I'm just pouring it in. I'm just pouring it in there. I'm getting lazy. I'm getting lazy with the spiders and people are gonna get hurt. This is not fun. This is not fun for children. Who does this for fun? Kids who are into like pipetting? Or baking? Little little bakery kids, little bakists running around making stuff in molds. <laughs> There's so much more gelatin! I've made I've filled up this thing like liberally. I have coated this thing in jelly, and there's like half a bowl left. I don't even like have any ice cube trays or anything to put this in. I don't want to just have a bowl of jello. Whatever. I'll just put it in the dishwasher for a thousand years and it'll clean itself out. Let the gummies cool in the refrigerator for at least 10 minutes. After the gummies have solidified, remove them from the molds using a toothpick. Cool. Woo! Carl Sagan's glorious turtleneck. That is still very hot. So I imagine that tasting the gummies at the end is gonna be like the big reveal. So while we're waiting on those to harden up, let's take a look through this book and see if there's any good information in here. What makes gummies gummies? How is the gummy candy able to melt and then reform into a gummy again? It's because of two ingredients in the seaweed powder. Karajinan and agar agar. Karajinan comes from certain types of red algae and contains long molecules that are made of many repeating parts, like links on a chain. Each molecule can also connect to other long molecules, forming a web. These molecules are called polysaccharides. One key property of this big tangled web of molecules is its ability to hold a lot of water. When karajinan is mixed with water, it forms what's called a gel, or a gelatinous substance. Gels contain mostly liquids, but behave more like solids. When you heat up a gel, the molecules start moving around more, which lets them slide past each other more easily. This causes the gel to become more like a liquid, but when you cool the gel back down again, the molecules reform their web and become more like a solid. That's a fantastic explanation. What's the age group on this, six and up? This is absolutely reasonable for like a six or an eight year old to get their head around. It goes on to break down what gelatin is. Gelatin is made from the bones and connective tissues of animals. That's true, by the way. Then it talks about agar agar, which is another polysaccharide that comes from seaweeds that I'm familiar with using in like microbiology labs to make little growth plates for bacteria, but it makes desserts too. The next experiment is all about measuring volume. You use a spoon to carefully measure out water into one of the molds on the tray, and then you use math to figure out what the whole tray must hold in terms of water volume. That's teaching algebra, that's pretty good. Then you melt and freeze a gummy. It has a whole thing here about the phases of matter. Then you do a little bit of chemistry with the gummies. It teaches actually some pretty decent stuff about acids and bases. This is not a very long or deep chemistry kit, but for six and up, and for this thing being, I think it was under 15 bucks, I would absolutely recommend this. This is a great little kit. Like I'm a little bit bummed out that there isn't more stuff for me to do here on camera. This whole kit takes about 10 minutes to do all together, not counting the stuff that you leave in the fridge or leave out overnight. But honestly, if I had 20 bucks and a niece or a nephew that wanted to learn about science or about cooking or just have some fun making gummy candies, this kit's a dope value. Really, when all is said and done, there's only one thing that I need to know about this kit before I'm able to really recommend it to anybody. And that 
is does this candy taste as bad as it smelled? It's really bouncy and jiggly, and I can feel the waves of motion going through it, and it feels fun on my fingers. So we'll just stick a toothpick in there, and those come out surprisingly well. Ah. Uh... Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I do love worms. Like, in general. So they're slimy. They're definitely slimy. They're, they're, they're more moist than you want them to be, and that's reasonable. That's to be... Oh. That's to be expected. They're fun to play with, I'll give them that. They're, they're like, they're stretchy, they're bouncy, they're real wiggly. Like, this is... For kids who like to play with their food, this is pretty cool. So here goes nothing. I am not a person who is easily grossed out. So, uh, if this is bad, it's real bad. Let's see what this tastes like. Oh. Not as chewy as you want it to be. Oh. There is a... Oh. Oh no. There is a dearth of flavor. And what's left is just... Let's seaweed, y'all. Oh. Oh no, no, no. I wasn't trying to do any kind of foreshadowing when I said that I'm not easily grossed out and that if this is gross, it's really gross. I was being genuine. I didn't know what this tasted like. Ah. Well, that is a disappointing end to an otherwise fun episode. I really liked this kid. The book is well written, it's easy to understand, it's got enough little experiments in it to hold the kid's attention and actually teach them something. Plus, doing this was fun if I was seven. But holy crap, that tastes so bad. <laughs> like, I can't explain how bad that tastes. It's it's like, it, it, it tastes like sadness. And I still have a bowl of it too. And you notice that the bowl has solidified. So this is now just what I get to deal with. Is this, this creature living in my dishes. Hey Forrest, are you gonna make the mixed berry one as well and try that? No, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna make the Bixberry one as well, because the green apple one tastes like hot trash. I will, however, taste a tiny bit of this Bixberry powder and see what that's all about. If you could powder cough syrup and mix it with pixie sticks, and then take everything that's good about that and just get rid of it. That's weird, y'all. That's, this, you shouldn't be eating that. That's, that's, ooh, that, that tastes like poison. All it's got is, is sugar and corn syrup solids and citric acid and salt and flavors and the, oh, there's something they're not telling you about in that one. No, 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 no. How did they spend all of their money hiring like the best educational writers and then just buy the worst, cheapest dump of food products? Like, I understand, the content here is what's important after all, but as far as the mind of a child is concerned, what you read and what you taste are very different things, and this is gonna stick in your head a lot more than this. So what you have here is just a neat little factoid book to remind you about the cool things that you learn while hating your life eating these terrible gummy candies. And as I'm waving this little book around, I just noticed on the back here they have the Geeker Family Tree. Now, I'm guessing that this is like all of their products. If you look at it here, there's three different like clades or, or, or families or dynasties of, of whatever these little monsters are. On the left here, we've got Wheeler and Spur. And I, I'm guessing that they're probably like the mechanical engineering side of things. Like maybe they have like some build it toys. Uh, they gave birth to Cadet who then married Hello, or, or maybe Hilo, but it's like a helicopter, I, I don't know. Uh, and then they had uh, this little props, little propeller boy, who then hooked up with Bender, who maybe is a, a elastic type creature. Over here in the middle, we've got Mega and Racket. So I guess this is like a, a sound, maybe an electronics type of thing, because then they have uh, their kids, PA and Boomer. Uh, PA gets with uh, Tony, like, like a tone, and then produces Bell as, as their offspring. Now on the right here, you've got the most interesting one for me. You've got Quartz and Zap. So this sounds like the, the physical sciences family tree over here. They gave birth to Drop, 
who then got with Nimbus. Now, I thought at first that Nimbus would look like a brain, but it looks like maybe a cloud, especially with the name Nimbus, that would make a lot more sense. So you've got the cloud and the drop, which then give birth to Sprout, which is some sort of horrible plant creature who then hooks up with Candy, who's just a piece of candy. There's no physical sciences here. And they give birth to Crystal. Now, I, I didn't understand what Crystal was. I thought maybe it was, you know, a growing Crystal, but that wouldn't make any sense coming from the Candy and the Sprout, because, you know, the Candy and the Sprout are like this, that's the seaweed, and so they come together to make the Gummy Candy. Plus, Quartz up at the top is already a growing Crystal, so I think Crystal is a Pancreas? And that makes sense, because then she hooks up with Gumby here. So you've got the Gumby Bear hooking up with the Pancreas, and their offspring, of course, will be diabetes. And looking back, Gumby makes several appearances throughout this book. He's always just creeping around the corner and watching us work. I retract everything I said. I don't like this at all. Don't buy this kit. This is really, really weird. I don't like any part of this. It tastes bad. It smells bad. It's creeping me out. This is probably going to be a shorter episode than usual. I try to do like at least one YouTube thing a month, but this kit has literally left such a bad taste in my mouth, I might try to crank out something else very soon just to kind of refresh the page a little bit. Have you tried this kit at home? Did you survive? Do I need to go to the hospital? I This has given me such a bad case of the Ghiblis, I don't even want this in my house anymore. So I'm going to go take care of this. Thank you so much for watching, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, and all the other stuff that you do here on YouTube. I'm Forrest, the Renegade Science Teacher. Have an awesome day, and never stop learning. Oh, I'm not kidding. Oh, Ghibli. Oh, Ghibli, Ghibli. Oh.